Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about the pituitary gland. Pituitary gland is roughly one centimeter in diameter and it weighs about one gram. And it is situated in a bony cavity known as cella tarsica at the base of the brain. Now the pituitary gland is anatomically divided into two distinct locations. Anterior pituitary, otherwise known as adenohypophysis, and the posterior pituitary, otherwise known as neurohypophysis. Anterior pituitary give rise to hormones such as prolactin, growth hormones, gonadotropins, thyroid stimulating hormones, and adrenal corticotropic hormones. Now, the posterior pituitary give rise to oxytocin and vasopressin. In between these two locations, anterior and posterior pituitary, there is a thin line-like structure which is known as sparse intermedia, which is underdeveloped in case of higher primates, but in lower animals, this is bigger. Now, they are not only dif different in terms of their anatomical location, but also their developmental origin is different. So roughly, we simplify the pituitary diagram like this, which is appears to be hanging from the hypothalamic region, and there is anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary. Now, during development, the anterior pituitary develops from a embryonic structure known as Ratke's pouch, which is a protrusion of uh, nasopharyngeal uh, epithelia. So it's an epithelial lineage. Now, the diencephalonic group also gives rise to a protrusion, which ultimately develops into the posterior pituitary. That means it has the neural lineage. Now, the diencephalonic protrusion increases in size, so as the Ratke's pouch protrusion, and ultimately the Ratke's pouch is pinched off, the protrusion from Ratke's pouch is pinched off, and the anterior pituitary is formed. And the posterior pituitary appears to be a continuous protrusion from the diencephalonic root. And that is how the pituitary gland development takes place. However, let's look at the hormones of the anterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary gives rise to thyrotropin, which stimulates the thyroid glands. It gives rise to corticotropins, which stimulates the adrenal cortex. It also gives rise to gonadotropins, which in affects the gonads. Then Somatotropins secreted from the anterior pituitary regulates growth of the bones, whereas prolactin secreted from the pituitary helps in breast development and lactation. Now let's take a look at the cell types and the basic histology of the anterior pituitary. So let's take a cross section of the pituitary gland to understand that. So here is a cross section of the anterior pituitary and we can see different histological zones and this demarcation is de depending upon the cell types. So here we have the thyrotrope cells, which secretes thyrotropins or TSH. Now there are somatotropes, corticotropes, lactotropes, and gonadotropes. So thyrotrope secretes TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone, which acts on the thyroid gland to secrete T3 and T4. Now corticotropes secrete ACTH or adrenal corticotropic hormone which stimulates the adrenal cortex to secrete the corticosteroids. Now, somatotropes secrete, somatotrope cells secrete growth hormone, which acts upon big bones and help in bone development or bone growth. Lactotropes secretes prolactin, which helps in lactation and breast development. Now, gonadotropes secretes FSH, LH, or ICSH hormones. Molecule stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, or interstitial cell stimulating hormone. All of that can act on gonads. For example, FSH works on follicles in the ovary, whereas ICSH works on the seminiferous tubules and help in sperm production and sperm development. Now, let's look at the relative abundance of these cell types. For example, the somatotrophs are the most abundant cell types present in the anterior pituitary. Approximately 30 to 40 percent of the cell types present in anterior pituitary is the somatotrophs. Whereas 20 percent of the cells present in the anterior pituitary are the corticotrophs secreting ACTH. Other than that, thyrotrophs, lactotrophs, and gonadotrophs comprises 5 to 10 percent of the other cell types present in the pituitary. So pituitary has the posterior division as well. Let's look at the posterior pituitary for a glance. 
Now, posterior pituitary have neuronal input from paraventricular and supraoptic nucleus. And the hormones which are secreted from the posterior pituitary are oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone. About them, we are going to learn in a totally different video. Now, the overall phenomena is the hypothalamus imposes a top-down control because hypothalamus releases several releasing hormones. These releasing hormones impose a top-down control on the tropic hormones secreted from the pituitary and thereby this works like an hypothalamus pituitary axis. So either hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis, hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis. So this is how the whole hormonal regulation takes place and there are several feedback loops ensuring proper secretion of the hormone and preventing over secretion or uh, over secretion related complications. So about that video, I'm going to, I'm going to make a part two of this. So keep watching and do subscribe my channel. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and do let me know how you like my videos in comments. Thank you.